Welcome, guys. In this week's episode, we are going for a sail in our dinghy, and Todd's going to show you how he made our custom instrument covers. Two years ago, we purchased a hurricane-damaged boat with the dream of sailing her around the world. Together with our kids, we've been learning, laughing, and working to make this dream come true. This is the story of our adventures on a sailboat named Spoon Drifter. It's not very much wind today, but I think it'll be perfect for what we're trying to do and trying to learn. Been feeling trapped down on the floor. I don't know what for. Feels like I'm gone. It was such a beautiful day, but there wasn't much wind. This was our first sale of the year, and it always takes a minute to remember how to put everything back together after a whole winter in storage. Let the stormy seas throw me in open water. Let me have my peace and lead me to tomorrow. Wind into my sail, away from things I let go, floating on the waves. Doesn't that look like great wind? We thought so too. That wind was just enough to get us out into the channel headed towards Aransas Bay. The tides were very low, making this narrow channel even narrower. And as we started moving northeast, the wind all but died, and our progress became slow and painful. But I won't let the stormy seas throw me in open water. Let me have my peace and leave me till tomorrow. Wind into my sail, away from things I let go, floating on the wave. We go bottoms up. See that green marker? Keep an eye on it. What little wind we did have was coming from the direction that we wanted to go. This made it very difficult to get past this channel marker. After an afternoon of trying to make headway, enjoying the sun, and watching a dolphin circle our boat, we turned around and used that wind to head back to the dock. I want to give a big shout out to our amazing patrons who have cheered us on and shared our ups and downs behind the scenes each week. Thank you so much. All right, today I'm by myself for a while and I'm going to make some new covers for our instrument cluster. And so part of, part of that process means I'm going to have to build a router table for the router. So let's get to it. see which router we want to use. I have this DeWalt one. This base plate, kind of junky. So I'm not sure I want to use it. I think I'm going to use Porter Cable. Porter Cable is a little stronger and it actually has the right bit for it. So. Let's take this one down and see if it'll work. Back down we go. Got a little stiffer breeze today. So I bought a couple things here just to kind of get us going. Got myself a board from Lowe's. Stuff I'm gonna make the cluster out of and Got some different screws. Two 
messy of a trailer, man. All right, hopefully you can hear me with this wind. So I've kind of laid out uh, three of them. I need three of them. One, two, three. So I'm gonna cut those uh, into a smaller size to make it easier to work with. Okay, so what I am using for this is a, um, it's like a foam core with aluminum on each side. It's got a protective plastic layer on it. So if you peel that off, it looks really nice. It's all finished. Uh, this foam core can be lightly, you know, sanded with like 600 and it polish up really nice. Won't let any water in there. And it's really strong and it's really stiff. Should work really good for doing these covers. So then I took off this cover here and I'm gonna use it as a pattern for the new one. All right, I thought I'd get out of the wind for a minute. In order to make these uh, covers for the instrument cluster, I'm going to use a router with a bearing on the end and the bearing is gonna run along the outside edge of that template as I have a piece of this aluminum attached to it. And as I do that, it will route off the excess aluminum clad plastic and leave me with the exact same shape that I had from the previous cover. And in order to do that, I need to build a router table. And so a router table is just simply a way of supporting a router in a fixed base, fixed table, and you basically do it upside down. So the router motor is, is facing down toward the ground and the bit is sticking up through the top. And then you can turn it on and you don't have to hold on to the router. That allows me to have both hands to hold on to my um, pattern and my piece of material that I'm working with and I can route them off and it'll work out really nice. So in order to build that router table, um, you can use all kinds of materials for it. Uh, flat is the best, obviously, and thin, but not too thin, because you want it to stay fairly stiff. So what I actually have is a piece of uh, birch plywood that I got at Home Depot in their cutoff section, where you can buy them in, in different sizes, and I just picked up a two foot by two foot piece. I think it was like 12 bucks. Um, normally I just use whatever I could find around the boat, but everything I have right now is kind of weathered and it's kind of rough and I don't want to scratch this aluminum. You can see the bit that I'm going to use has a bearing on it and it's just a straight cut bit. So I'm going to pull this base off to use as a template right here. So I'm going to use this as my template for my router base. I only need to have you know this much room so I'm probably gonna put the hole like right here pop a hole through this doesn't have to be perfect don't really care now I got to take this lay it over the hole and mark where my screws go through two three four of them now I'm go get a drill bit for that drill some holes So now, get my uh, 8x32s and my router base. I go like yay. And we'll get these started. So now that those holes are all drilled and the router is mounted, got it right there, and the router is mounted underneath there. So I'm probably just gonna kind of set this here and there and get a couple, get a couple bar clamps or a couple uh, quick grip clamps and put on the board to hold it in place. Beautiful, eh? Now the trick is, can we get it off of the double-sided tape? Because it's stuck pretty good. Oh, 
probably can use that again. Oh yeah. When you're cutting on the outside, as you're looking down at your router bit, it is spinning counterclockwise. So as you're cutting into your piece of material, you're going to spin your piece of material counterclockwise also, so that it meets the edge of the blade. However, when you're doing an inside circle, your uh, bit is turning counterclockwise as well, but you have to take your piece of material and turn it clockwise because it is actually, the blade is actually contacting the opposite side of the piece of material. I'm not sure that was turned on for that, but I peeled it off. Nice finished edge. Um, pretty smooth everywhere. The router bit does a good job there. Now I'm just going to take some 220 sandpaper and I'm just going to kind of ease the edge a little bit so that it's not sharp. Because right now it is, it is really sharp and I could slice my finger open with it. So, so here's my Ray Marine. Fits in nice on the back and lines up good there. So we can mount that to our ideally bobber right here. So now the question is to butyl or to use their spongy stuff. I think I'm going to use the spongy stuff. Like that. These are a little too big. I gotta go to the hardware store again. Dang. Sometimes it's how the day goes. However, the boat owner just drove by here with his track hoe down the road right here and he hit the power line with his track hoe. And so now we don't have any power at our meter. So you see that pole right there? That loose wire right there? Shh. It actually runs down to the ground and is sitting over there on the road. So anyway, he hit that with his track hoe, snapped the power line in half. Half of it flew into the boat yard and landed on the ground next to a boat. The other half of it landed on the street and who knows how long it's going to be before somebody comes by to fix it. Oh well. washer just for fun a lock washer and a locking nut we'll get them all one beautiful okay looks good I can't actually um, screw it into the housing until it's wired but this is what it looks like Snap the cover back on. We're good to go. Beautiful. Thank you for watching to the end. Be sure to give us a thumbs up. And if you'd like to give us some extra support, share our videos on social media and consider becoming a patron.